Welcome, everybody. Hey, this is a virtual event away. four of the CIO Symposium, the MIT Sloan CIO Symposium for 2023. Uh, we've been creating a community before the event in the past couple of years. And so this is part of building that community, building the momentum as we come up to the big event in May. Uh, this one is event number four, Evolution and Revolution of the CIO Role. And I'm George Westrom. I'm a senior lecturer at MIT Sloan, uh, co-chair of the Sloan Leadership Awards for about 12 years now, and the host of today's panel. With me, I'm joined by Christopher Reichert, who was chair of the symposium in the very early days from 2004 to 2013. Then Lindsay Anderson, who was chair from 2014 to 2019. And then Alan Tate, who's our current chair and mega producer of everything in the, uh, the event and the, the community. So uh, today's panel is going to be very much not only about the evolution of the CIO role, but also the evolution of the CIO symposium to go along with that. The CIO symposium, we try to make it reflect the conditions of the time and also push forward a little bit every year. And you'll see as we talk about it that that has changed over time uh, in very interesting ways. So welcome gentlemen to the panel and uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to say. I'm sure everybody else is too. So I want to lead off as somebody who's studied CIOs for a long, long time, and just think about how the role has changed uh, since I've seen it. I started in 2002 at MIT, so about 20 years ago, and started studying IT, and then from there moved into digital concepts, and now I'm into culture and people. Uh, and we see that same kind of progression happening in IT uh, and in the general world of business as we went over time. So. I just put together some basic kind of thoughts here. Uh, if we look at what's happened over the last 20 years in IT, you know, when I first started at MIT, and I was with this group called Scissor, which is a phenomenal research organization for IT leaders. Um, when I first started in 2002, the first five years or so there was really about just how do you run IT better? And so when you look at the research that we were doing, the kinds of books that we were producing, how do you do governance? What, where do you spend your money? What is this thing called enterprise architecture? I was studying risk, risk management. Um, and it was really about just, if you are a leader of IT, how do you run that IT shop well? Then somehow we started to shift a little bit more as we got into 2007, 2010 timeframe. Uh, you know, as the economy was picking up, of course, before it went down again, um, we shifted over towards innovation more towards driving change with IT. Around that time, uh, we also started studying not only how do you run IT, but if you are not a respected leader, if you're having troubles connecting with the business, how does the business think about you? And so uh, did some very interesting work on there about how non-IT leaders saw the IT. And that actually was really informative because it helped instead of just trying to push the ideas out there, it started actually talking about, well, what do they see how can we change that? And that actually led for me to a book called The Real Business of IT, which had a huge effect on my life, but I think it had a huge effect on the industry about as a CIO, how can you go from order taker to true partner? And that's not just doing technology better. It's about managing the relationships, building the trust, building those relationships and the co-creation of value over time. So that was 2010. We then had some economic challenges, which you knew about in that, that range. And as we came out of it, IT changed again. What happened there? Suddenly, these major forces entered that weren't there before. If before we were studying IT, and IT was something that the CIO kind of controlled, then comes along social and mobile, cloud. And suddenly, things are, are no longer completely in the control of the CIO. And in addition, and that's for good and for bad, but in addition to that, you have um, people are starting to be able to run their own technology better. And people starting to ask, why is my experience on my phone so brilliant? And my experience inside the company is so horrible. And so there was a big change, not only in what the, the top leaders of companies were demanding of IT, but also what every employee in the company was talking, demanding. And so that, that led to a whole, big push on digital was just starting. So of course, at the same time, security became more and more of a challenge over time. And in the last five years or so, it's really been moving from 
how do we think about this digital thing to really, how do we co-lead change in organizations? And the best CIOs now are really stepping up. You're seeing CIO changing to chief digital officer, to chief information and digital officer. Um, chief, you know, there's a lot of transformation kinds of roles in there. Uh, also, there was a, an idea that Richard Hunter and I, when we wrote this book in 2010, we coined this term called the CIO plus. And the idea was, if you become good at what you're doing as a CIO, you'll get asked to do other things. And the CIO plus was the concept of, okay, now you'll take on strategy, you'll take on operations, you'll take on a bunch of other things. We had seen a few CIOs getting there. What we had written was kind of aspirational on how you move there. Now we're seeing it all the time. That the best CIOs, especially, you know, that we see, including the award uh, people that we're all reading about uh, in, right now in our award process, they're doing multiple things. They're running parts of the business. They're not just running IT. And so that idea CIO Plus, we created that. Other people, of course, picked it up and ran with it. Um, and what was aspirational has become almost expect, expected for great leaders in IT. So that's just kind of what I've seen over 20 years, going from running the IT shop and trying to do it better to trying to be respected and be part of you know, your seat at the table to now the best CIOs in the world are actually driving that change. They're helping to envision and make big changes happen. And if I were to just take a couple ideas from some of the winners that we've had over the past couple of years, just looking at the last 10 years, um, 2012, Chris Peretta at State Street really did a, a back office optimization, a lot of rationalization, a lot of cleanup. That's a really complicated company and it's a really tough job but he, as the award winner, that was really about just cleaning up and getting, you know, making sense of the mess. But then we started moving from there and talking about CIOs who were taking a big role in customer experience. Uh, Thaddeus Arroyo in 2014, changing the whole retail customer, customer experience at at and Michael Nillis uh, at Schindler, talking about connecting product and process, creating new business models. So you're not just selling an elevator, you're selling a whole new experience and moving on and on and on through that area. Um, and then the last couple of years, we've seen more. Rather than putting functions out there or optimizing a, a process or a, a unit, we're starting to see true, true change in how the whole organization works. And I'm thinking, for example, um, Shami Muhammad at CarMax, true culture change in the organization, in a, in a car sales organization, creating a whole omni-channel experience. Vipin Gupta, uh, two years ago at Toyota Financial, launching an entirely new set of services for Toyota Financial, not only for Toyota Financial, but also to be uh, private labeled for other car dealers, uh, car manufacturers like Mazda, and doing it during the pandemic without missing a deadline. And then uh, our last winner, Wafa, uh, Wafa Mamili from Zodis, not only creating a dashboard like we'd seen before, 10 years before um, at Guess, uh, the clothing place, but the dashboard now has integrated predictive analytics, optimizing the marketing spend for the organization, truly running and leading the function, not just enabling the function. So this is what we've seen from making IT work better, to helping to improve key processes, to actually playing a fundamental role in transforming the company works. We've seen that happening and we're seeing the great leaders doing it. And hopefully we'll see more and more leaders doing that over time. So hopefully that that's a summary is resonating with what you have seen. And we will be taking questions in uh, about halftime in our uh, event. But what we wanted to do also, because we've got these, these stars here, is not only talk about the CIO, but we're at the 20th anniversary of the CIO symposium. And so what we wanna do is with that backdrop of how the CIOs have changed from running IT better to helping to transform to actually leading change in the company, what does that look like in terms of the way we've changed the symposium over the years? And you know, it, what's fascinating to me here is that the next three people you'll see, we all work together on this symposium. Uh, we all just kind of volunteer together and chat with each other. And we sometimes forget what amazing things people have done over the years and how much amazing history we've got in the crowds, the small crowd of volunteers that runs this symposium. And so uh, I'm delighted to, to kick off right now by introducing you to, to Christopher Reichert. And Christopher ran the CIO symposium um, 
from 2004, the second year that in its existence up to 2013. And Christopher, if you could talk a little bit about what was the symposium back then and how did it change while you were leading it over time? Hello to everyone. Good to, good to see familiar faces, some, some new faces. Uh, so my name is Christopher Reichert. Uh, I am the vice president of the MIT Sloan Boston Alumni Association. And as George uh, mentioned, I've been associated with the event since 2004, which is pretty much the year, well, it is the year that I graduated from uh, MIT. So I, I joined, I volunteered for this small event, which I'd heard about. I'm, my background is in technology management. So this seemed like a really good way to stay connected to the community and build a community and also stay connected to MIT. So back then, uh, when I when I joined, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we that seem normal now were were didn't exist. Uh, our our documentation was, I think, a word document. Our website, I don't think we had a website. We um, we had two great partners, uh, the Center for Digital Business, which has morphed into the uh, initiative on the digital digital economy, um, and Sim Boston. So Sim Boston uh, was our partner along with IDE for probably the first five or six years, um, and that was IDE longer. But Sim Boston, um, we uh, they they founded their own event um, sort of around 2010, and so they. Um, one of the key aspects, I think, of what we were trying to do uh, with the symposium was have that connection to MIT professors and Sloan thought leaders and centers across MIT. George mentioned Scissor, IDE, and there have been many other partners. And, and I think that's, you know, one of the sort of, it's in the DNA of this event that we have this, this strong academic uh, component to uh, to inform the panels, whether it's moderators or speakers. And that's something that we're very proud of. Uh, and we guard uh, zealously every year to make sure that that, that comes through in the, the depth and breadth of the panels. You know, in the early years, uh, as George mentioned, you know, a lot of what the, a lot of what we were trying to do was um, make a name for the CIO as not just this technology, you know, hammer with the, with the nail, just managing the under, you know, the, the, uh, the infrastructure of, a, of an organization. Uh, it was yes to get that and to get that right always, and that's still part of every CIO symposium, but really to promote the notion that the technology leaders uh, in an organization, uh, not, and not just in organizations which are technology organizations like Microsoft or the Googles of the world, which didn't, you know, barely existed back then, but every business really was transforming itself uh, in ways that at speed and efficiency that required technology, not just to be the order taker of what was going on, but actually be the driver and partner at the table throughout the conversation to make sure that the implementation uh, was was uh, it, successful and nimble and continues to be. So it's interesting going back over, and we'll go through this a little bit later here, the um, the programs, well, I put together a slideshow on the program covers and the themes. And you can see in the early years, we were really trying to uh, promote this notion of IT as, you know, hey, you know, we're here, pay attention to us. Um, and the second, as we evolved into what I think everyone now knows is a digital economy, essentially a digital economy, uh, is to really promote the, the leadership side. And that's with the in, introduction of the CIO uh, award uh, around 2008, 2009 with uh, my uh, colleagues, Gopi Bala and Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson still associated with the award. And um, so he brings that DNA through it. Um, and one of the, and I'll hand it over to my successor in a moment, one of the key tenants that I always promoted in the CIO symposium was innovate every year. So let's just not talk about technology innovation, but as an event, let's innovate and introduce something new every year. Some things stay, some things go. Uh, it's interesting going back on some of the programs in 2006, seven, you know, we had over the websites, um, we had podcasts going back then. So I kind of find it amusing that podcasts are this huge thing now. Um, when we were doing it back in 2006 and 2007, uh, and so some things have stayed, some things like the award and other things we've we've experimented with. And I and I love that sort of uh, element of the Seattle Symposium, which is the experimentation side of it. So as um, after I've been associated, I, not share actually 2004 to, to 2009, 
but actually chair for many years. I took on many of the different roles, sponsorship and, and panels and whatnot, just to kind of give myself a rounded experience and also take a break. And so through there, I do want to recognize that Graham Rong was, was chair for a year uh, in there. Gobi Bala and Mike Johnson were also in there. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> funnily enough, I've been trying to get rid of it for years, you know, but I'm rusted on, right, guys? 20 years. So I've kind of tried to put myself in an advisory board role now. And it was with great pleasure uh, towards the end of my tenure to look around and who could take on this mantle, who had the skills to understand where we're coming from, but more importantly, kind of take it to the next level. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Lindsay Anderson, who was uh, my successor and um, has taken it on. So over to you, Lindsay. Well, thank you very much, Christopher. Um, so Christopher and I uh, worked together. Um, we were both on the MIT Boston Sloan Alumni Association. And uh, so one of the things was that we were serving on the advisory board. Um, and it was Christopher that asked me to take over the role of the leadership of the symposium. And it was a great experience. And I'm very thankful uh, that he gave me the opportunity to do that. Uh, like many executives newly taking over organization, I did a lot of thinking about the symposium, its strengths, its weaknesses, how it compares to other major IT conferences like Gartner. I concluded that MIT is what made the symposium special. Therefore, I, revolved, I resolved to strike the connection with MIT because as Christopher mentioned, the symposium is not actually an official part of the MIT. It is founded and continues to be run by the MIT Sloan Boston Alumni Association. When I took over the reins, the symposium already had strong academic ties with the Initiative of the Digital Economy, or IDE, as Christopher mentioned. Strengthening ties with MIT first meant maintaining and growing this relationship with IDE. Working with its executive director, David Verrill, I made sure that IDE's academic superstars Eric Bridgelson, Andy McAvee, Sanan Aral, among others, had key roles in the symposium. I also established an academic partnership with other organizations within MIT, uh, specifically CISR. Um, we've mentioned CISR. Uh, George worked at CISR for a while. Uh, Christopher mentioned CISR. CISR is the Center for Information Systems Research. So by its very name, it should be clear why I thought they could make a contribution to the symposium. Peter Weil, Jeannie Ross, and Stephanie Warner were among the key CISR contributors to the symposium. Placing a greater emphasis on MIT thought leadership also led to a restructuring of panel discussions. MIT academics became the moderators for the vast majority of the panels. The Latin motto for MIT is mens in manus, mind in hand, theory and practice. MIT is not just about theory, it also emphasizes practice. Therefore, I made sure to integrate leading global CIOs and industry experts, the doers, into panel discussions and other aspects of the symposium. The symposium's affiliation with MIT is through the MIT Sloan School of Management. Therefore, we place more emphasis on executive leadership than the nuts and bolts of a particular technology. Yes, we are interested in cloud implementations, but only in the sense of how it impacted the organization as a whole. The symposium has a C-suite focus. The emphasis on executive leadership rather than technology is also reflected, reflected as we George has mentioned and Christopher has touched on in the changing role of the CIO. The symposium is about CIOs. Therefore, every year we honor three to five exceptional CIOs through the MIT Sloan Leadership Award. I made sure we utilize these outstanding CIOs to the max. We implemented a CIO leadership panel of the award finals moderated by George Westerman. We made sure that each finalist also participated on an additional panel. So, and we continued um, as to mentioned by Christopher in finding ways to innovate on the symposium. Um, we had a lunch break. We made an effort to do uh, birds of feather tables to get the lunchings um, more involved, to make that experience um, when people sit down at a table, have an opportunity to discuss 
of various topics uh, specifically related to uh, information technology. Um, I also introduced a way of getting the voice of our audience into the symposium by having individuals giving them an opportunity to review what our panel ideas were and to make suggestions as well as to vote as to what they thought was most relevant at the time. All of this boils down to a mission statement. The MIT Sloan CIO Symposium brings the academic thought leaders of MIT together with the leading global CIOs and industry experts in a one-day exchange of ideas and best practices. Finally, one of my key responsibilities as symposium chair was to recruit volunteer talent, including my successor, Alan Tate. All right, Lindsay. So with that, I guess I'll give my part. So I started as the chair of the symposium in 2020. And before I started as chair, I was a volunteer for the symposium for about eight years. So most of Lindsay's tenure, and I got to work with Lindsay and Christopher for all that time. And while I was volunteering for the symposium, I was a consultant for I, uh, IBM Global Business Services. So I was one of the guys flying around the country, consulting with companies like Boeing and Walmart and others on their IT system. So I, I did that during the day and came back and then work with these guys to put together the symposium. So I'm the COVID chair. <laughs> I uh, took over during COVID, and you will remember that the 2020 symposium was canceled. So we invented something called the Digital Learning Series, which was basically a public service where we gave a series of monthly webinars to people while they were trying to figure out uh, how to cope with COVID. And the interesting thing about the symposium in those years is we were trying to cope with the pandemic at the same time that the CIOs were trying to cope with the pandemic so that we had a lot of synergy uh, with that. Um, after the digital learning series, we decided to do our first virtual symposium and we chose a community platform uh, for the virtual symposium instead of a platform that was specifically uh, designed to run a conference. Um, we had this idea, first of all, for 2021, we ran the symposium over um, eight weeks rather than doing it all in one day because we knew from the digital learning series that people didn't really like to sit in front of their computers as long as they would come to an in-person conference. And we also began experimenting with all alternative formats. So, this particular session, for example, um, is a variation on the 2021 Thursday format where we used uh, a Zoom meeting format and brought the audience in for an elongated Q&A session, which is what we're going to do today. And I got a lot of positive feedback about that. Um, as we went into 2022, um, our focus in 22 was really, I would say, entirely on going back to an in-person format. So by that time in the pandemic, people were very, very anxious to get back to in-person, and that became our focus. Now, we had to change venue. Uh, we were in Wong Auditorium in the Sandberg Center rather than Kresge, where we had been for years and years um, during you know, Lindsay's time and going back, I think, even in Christopher's time. Uh, and now in 2023, I would say that the uh, hybrid model is really gone, but we're using the digital community that we created both as a website, but also as a way of um, connecting the audience uh, before the actual event. So my mantra is that, you know, I want people to have opportunities to meet each other and engage with each other in the months leading up to the symposium. So the symposium becomes sort of like an annual wedding. And uh, we all come together for a variety of uh, different experiences in virtual space uh, to prepare for that wedding. Now, some of the things that have changed in the years that, you know, I've been uh, with the symposium, I mean, I'm continuing the tradition of having deep ties with MIT, we have a very strong partner team led by Chitra Dwarka, 
who has been trying to develop relationships with many groups within MIT. So for example, in 2020, uh, we had Yossi Sheffi who did a panel um, and he's from the MIT Transportation and Logistics Department. Um, we've also had people from the uh, Center, Center for uh, Collective Computing or Cognitive Computing, you'll excuse me if I don't get the name exactly right. Um, and so we've, we've had a lot of different representatives from different corners of MIT. And I think this kind of represents the ever-expanding role of the CIO as they're actually reaching into different uh, technical areas and finding new technologies that they can utilize. Um, the other thing is, is that we have been really developing deep relationships with the CIOs, especially those CIOs that go through the award program. Um, many of those CIOs have joined the organizing team, for one thing. Uh, we have a number of people within the organizing team who've now become community authors or, and are beginning to publish information within the community. We now have some CIOs who are beginning to manage their own space. And so they're going to, they have a vision of creating conversational corners within the community, uh, which can foster conversations on CIO transformation, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and other topics. Um, in a few weeks, you're going to see that we're going to introduce the CIO to CIO series. So this is a new series that will be in a format similar to this one, except we're taking CIOs, uh, primarily CIOs who are CIO award finalists, and having them have conversations with each other. So not any consultants or academics. We're really bringing them together. That we're giving them a special place. Uh, you know, a, a three-week uh, program where we would really have those conversations. And then when we get back into May, it becomes more of the traditional panel discussions with all the same emphasis that Lindsay mentioned in terms of highlighting the MIT leaders. Although a few of the panels in 2023 will have uh, CIO leadership award winners from prior years actually become the moderator, uh, which is something that we've introduced. So um, I guess, uh, you know, during my tenure, um, I've had a lot of tradition to uphold um, in, in terms of maintaining the mission. The mission that Lindsay mentioned hasn't changed, uh, but the format has changed. We've added in the online community and now we're looking to add additional programming to make the symposium experience something that uh, everybody can look forward to, not just on in May, but from the big, very beginning of ideation in the fall. And which, by the way, we it, we during the ideation phase in the fall, we try to involve the whole community in going through these virtual programs from January to May. And uh, I don't know, just making an experience that everybody can look forward to and, and give you a chance to interact with MIT. Okay, well, great, thank you. Thank you for uh, chairs for sharing that history. I, I was, I've only been here for about two thirds of that history. So it's great to hear this all the way along uh, on what's been happening. And the question came up about, you know, are we talking about CIOs or are we talking about the symposium? And as we were sitting back and trying to think about who had the history that, to really go through this, it became really clear that there were actually transformations that lined up very, very nicely with each other. So where I was talking about the CIO role, changing from managing IT and trying to get the attention of the business to kind of enabling business change and then getting more of a seat at the table, being part of the conversation, and then to helping to be true owner and driver of change and transform the organization. That's where the CIO role was going, but you hear what the chairs were saying over time. Let's talk about IT as something separate from MIT and Sloan. So let's integrate more closely and, and much more respect on both sides about how we're working together to make this happen. And then to move to not only have a, the, the event, but the conversation about a community and also to drive that single event focus into an ongoing conversation over the year. So you see kind of this evolution and change and growing higher and higher levels of value on both sides. 
Uh, one other thing we thought we'd do in order to, to make these comparisons happen here is to talk about how the themes have changed, just to reinforce what's been going on here. So Christopher has our album covers uh, for the last decade. Uh, and so he's gonna just walk through quickly on what they are. And just and we you, can all read what the key top level theme is. Great, you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. Excellent. All right, so 2005, so you'll see a change. You know, here he is, you know, e-business. Wow, have we, have we used that term <laughs> for, for a decade or less? Not really, right? What works, what doesn't, what doesn't. Again, coming back to like, almost like justifying, hey, IT means, you know, it really is good for the business. Reminding people that, that that's there. Uh, and also, you know, the competitive advantage you can get from not just technology, but we're trying to introduce the idea of people's partners, processes, right? It's not just the infrastructure. And, you know, 2008 came along, of course, we had all of a sudden uh, the, the Great Recession, right? So we pivoted over to cost leadership to remind people that uh, technology leaders can respond quickly and should. Uh, and then lightning bolts, you can see we're still fighting our way out of that, uh, that trauma to the economy and, and the society. And we're starting to emerge, right? So how can the growth come back? Uh, and, and how can the CIO leaders manage both the top line growth and bottom line results? Really just making sure that people understand that they can play a role in both, right, as leaders. Um, and through this, um, you know, we introduced also another innovation, which was the uh, innovation showcase, which I think was a great, it, it answered, it was a great example of, hey, somebody had an idea and let's just fold it into what the CIO symposium evolves into. Uh, and for that, you know, we brought in every year, we've been bringing in now for years, uh, in a, young companies that could have products or services that are relevant to CIOs to help them do their jobs better. And some of those have gone on to huge, you know, CapEx and, and success. So it's been a great, uh, Pleasure to have them along for their energy, but also for what they've been able to, to achieve as well. All right, so Crossroads, and now we're introducing this notion of digital, and, um, and uh, Lindsay can probably weigh in at some point on some of these here. Um, untethered, I, I assume we're talking about cloud, right? As it comes um, in. Well, we were talking both about cloud and wireless devices, you know, the onset of iPhones and, and such. You know, how is that? To changing the technology. Uh, you know, in a sense, this is also like an introduction to what we went through with COVID, you know, the, the remote um, offices. So, um, and the transformational CIO has to do with, you know, the, uh, what we've been talking about, you know, all along, transformation. How the CIO the in yeah, and IT is it right, right? As it leaves a, the data center, right, and it goes into the cloud, and it's everywhere. Um, you know, so now is a digital enterprise. We're focusing, you know, not on clouds, you know, specifically technologies. It's an enterprise that's based on digital, and how do we drive that forward? Because at this point in time, twenty fourteen, it's nascent. Um, you know. Similar, you know, inventing your future, accelerating success through technology um, is not, you know, it's we're focusing on the through part, the through technology. Uh, thriving, once again, that magic word digital, um, <laughs> we're exactly. now in a digital economy. Um, so uh, the CIO, the role is changing, it's an adventure. Um, what's now, next, and beyond? You know, we're looking at the, those changes. Um, oh, geez, that word digital again. Um, <laughs> you know, here we're going from vision to execution. Now it's, you know, we've, we've thought about what, you know, this digital thing. Now we want to actually implement it. Um, hey, it's a smarter enterprise. Oh, those halcyon days. And then yeah. <laughs> here we go. Enter and then, Alan. <laughs> and, and, and then we come to the uh, uh, the pandemic chair and uh, with CIOs figuring out how to deal with the pandemic. And then everybody got tired of talking about the pandemic. And uh, so we began thinking about the new century with uh, uh, new technologies. And of course, everybody is familiar how AI has emerged on the scene. And um, we were beginning to think about it in 2021, but now everybody's playing with it um and uh and now we're dealing with a turbulent world 
And there we're back to it, right? 2008 all over again, sort of thing in 2009. And, you know, that's a fascinating thing as I see this going through uh, is we do see certain things, you know, certainly the symposium is, is aimed to reflect the current situation, but also be aspirational. And you've seen that all the way through. Mm -hmm. You see words like the innovation word come and go over time. We see the balancing innovation and cost in there. And then we also have just the incredible importance of what's going on out in the external world in the markets that, you know, it doesn't matter how innovative you want to be if nobody's in the office right now, because, you know, you've got COVID going on, or if you're in the middle of the biggest recession since the depression. Um, and so the CIOs constantly have to get there. So it is fascinating to see this aspirational role and, and the aspiration moving from just innovating to being untethered and digital and in true transformation, but also constantly having to deal with what's happening in the economy to drag you back in a way on there. Yeah, I mean, if anything, COVID and pandemic has shown that if an organization isn't nimble and uh, can pivot quickly on, on uh, in a digital environment, then they're probably not going to survive, certainly not thrive. So, so let me ask you, you know, certainly we have seen in the award process that CIOs are getting, as I showed you some of them, they're just getting more and more impressive over time. And actually, you know, the, the floor in the CIO symposium, the awards, you never get to see all the people that applied that were not finalists, but the floor, the basic level, the lowest level award applicant we get is pretty darn good these days. And so the things that we, that in two, 10, 12 years ago would have been considered really a best practice is now just assumed, you know, getting your ERP in place, consolidating, reducing your costs, there's more involved in there. But let me just ask you, as the panelists, having seen this uh, over time, we have a good idea what good looks like through our awards, through our panels that we run, through the symposia, it's the symposium itself, or the symposia plural. Um, if that's true, if we know so well, why do we still see so many IT people and so many businesses struggling with IT? What do you think is going on there? Well, uh, one of the things that I think is that we have both the IT side and the business side. So, you know, in order for an organization to thrive um, through technology, um, it needs to be a true partnership between IT and business. Now, since we're the, the CIO Leadership Award, we're focusing on, you know, the CIO's role in making that happen. But there's also a flip side where, you know, if the business is not responsive um, and accepting of some of the you know, potential of IT, that's going to slow down the what is available. It can happen through technology. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I, I think that if um, an organization, uh, you know, it, and I think that comes to some of the things that we've been promoting over the years, which is that, you know, it's one thing to say, IT is important, IT is important, IT is important, let me be part of the conversation. I think that it does take uh, in the in the award winners and even as George mentioned, the bottom level of the applicants, right? Even even the ones that you know don't make it through the first or second or you know, multiple rounds, um, we're seeing that the the core skill that they have always has to be sort of a technology you know now, right? But another one that's almost as important, if not more important, is a leadership skills to be able to be to bring persuasion and uh, a cogent argument to the table to, to, uh, to be part of the conversation. I think that's, a, that's something that I think is a constant push that we're promoting, uh, that, that technical skills are one thing, but also the leadership and the mentorship uh, is, is just as important. Add that I think that in a lot of cases, there's a lot of technical inertia. You know, with legacy systems, uh, you know, it's not always so easy to make a transition when companies have a big investment in um, either mainframe technology or or in-house uh, servers, so um, that that can slow it down. Change is hard. I'm sorry, go ahead, Lindsay. So I was going to say that you know when we look at our award finalists, um, interestingly enough, um, twenty percent. I mean, that's my guesstimate. I don't have a real hard number. Actually, came from the business side. They were business executives um, that went over to IT. Um, and that gave them, you know, an opportunity to not only, you know, get the technology to learn the technology, but also just in the emphasis that business has on technology. 
I will. So uh, I, I want to get, come back to that in just a second, Lindsay, because uh, it brings up an interesting question. But I just want to add one other thought on this too. Um, is that I, I teach this course called Essential IT for the Non-IT Executive. We're going to teach it in about three weeks here, and it's a it's a two-day course where people come in from the outside and say, "Man, my IT is broken. How do I hire the right IT leader?" Basically, and they learn a lot of what's going on is they broke it. It wasn't the CIO that broke it. It was they broke it. Um, but what's fascinating is I bring in a CIO leader to talk to this group during that two days. And over and over again, these CFOs and CEOs and uh, are just say, man, I want one of them. And so then we'll have a conversation. Why don't you have one of them? And it becomes really clear often that they didn't know what to ask for. And so they promoted their most technical person or they just hired somebody who looked really like they knew what they were talking about, as opposed to somebody who could be a true leader, a true driver of change. So part of it also is just, you know, the market, the market, meaning the executives hiring CIOs weren't looking for the right things. And they have, they're going to, they're learning more about how to do that. And I see Craig uh, in the chat put up that his most successful CIO was from a sales background. And I think that goes to the kind of a rounded skill set that I think you need to have, which is, you know, I guess from sales, that's clearly you have to be persuasive to be successful in sales, right? So, and Jack, uh, Jack Omar, I think you wanted to have a, a question, right? Yeah, I will echo to Lindsay what he said is, in my experience in the last 20 years, I have seen is a, the culture of the organization. And yes, your IT organization is a parallel running uh, team along with the business. And the most important thing that I've seen is the trust. In the uh, in the CIOs and the leader and the IT technology world, the other things that I've seen in the last five six years or even the last eight years is the ROI return justification. And you you cannot take that big bang approach any longer. You have to go piecemeal basis and and start building that trust with your business partner. And that's where you start to get success and as well as the trust of the other side of the world that is the business. And that's how I have seen the success come with. So Great, I agree with all the points. Great. So, so we have a question from Irving. Uh, Irving has been, been in IT for as long as IT has existed. Uh, he also is, is a, a really strong advisor to the symposium and a part of the award program. So Irving, you had a question here you wanted to ask. Yeah, I actually wanted to comment on uh, something you all said. Why, do, why is it so difficult to implement new technologies in business. Why do so many of them, of them fail? And you know, when Christopher showed this slide, eBusiness 2.0, uh, Christopher, that was the one of the first symposium. Yes. You know, it reminded me that I was actually personally very involved in eBusiness 1.0 when I was organizing IBM's internet strategy in 95. And what was so difficult then? Well, first of all, the internet was brand new. The vast majority of people had no idea what it was, what it was good for. Uh, you had all kinds of um, articles about how exciting it was, how it would bring the world together and stuff like that. But remember, if you go to a company and, and you said the internet is very exciting, they will say, okay, Irving, what the hell do I do with it? How do I make money? What's the business value? Now I'm bringing that up now because here we are in 2023 and the great new technology of course are the generative AI technologies and we're asking question, uh, is it intelligent? Does it have common sense? On and on and on and on. Now, if you go to a business, they don't care whether Chat GPT has common sense or not. They might care at night after a few beers, but what's the business value? And I think that's what's so unique about the MIT CIO Symposium 
if you look at the panels where we bring together the IBM technologies and the younger technical people, especially who are developing these technologies with the CIOs and the people from the Sloan School and others who have to make sense of it, that is really, really, really difficult. And I think that's why so many fail. George, you've been thinking about all this. Does that make sense to you? No, it, it totally does make sense. It's, it's a complex, and I'm going back to what Harold said also, you know, that you can get consumed by how complicated this is. You can get consumed by what people are asking for, by what they really, rather than what they really need. And it yeah. takes a true leader to be able to push through and say, here's how to make sense of this. Here's how to make this work in your organization. Uh, and I'm thinking, Irving, what you did at IBM, but also, you know, what happened in Internet 2.0 and what's happened with mobile and digital and exactly. others along the way. Yeah, I think just to reiterate that as well as in, in my various, you know, roles as CIOs outside of the symposium, you know, the challenge, one of the hardest challenges was, well, keeping the lights on and all that sort of thing, right? But also trying to change something for is, is hard from a human perspective, but also because there's a natural uncertainty involved in the process. That's where the trust you have to have, people have to have in you um, and your skills and ability to persuade people that to take that risk uh, is our key components, key elements. And remember, the CIO has to understand the technology, but it also has to understand he or she, its potential business value. They have to have one foot in both worlds you know, that's not necessarily true of the CIO, the CEO, the board, the sales leader, other people, or the people in the research labs inventing new technologies and new products. So being a CIO is tough, and I think it's getting tougher. So, so one of the points that, you know, I want to flip yeah. it a little bit and talk about what I call the a bridge too far. And that is that uh, one of the things with technology, it has so much great potential that we get carried away with the potential and don't actually realize that the technology is not quite there to reach the potential. So um, some CIOs do implementations um, with, the, with goals too lofty um where the technology is just not ready to do it yet mm -hmm. so if you have questions uh please add them to the comments there uh and uh you know as, as we're waiting for for that uh i'll ask a question that, that seems to be it's something that lindsay indicated and i think it's something we should talk about more will we have a cio role in the future will that be an it role or a business role or something else anybody want to jump on that I think will definitely require executive, senior executive who understand technology and business. Mm -hmm. And let me, for the sake of answering your question, say, we'll call them CIO, CDO, CTO, something like that, but we really need those people badly. So I think the answer to your question is yes. I don't know what we'll call them. So, you know, just in a historical point on the symposium, you know, in my tenure, and I'm sure Alan has wrestled with it, is that, all right, you know, do we still call this the CIO symposium? You know, the role has changed, you know, um, we have all these other titles, um, you know, how do we sort of address that? And, you know, my thinking was, all right, the CIO is still the premier role, um, the most common role. Um, and, you know, we'll just expand the definition of CIO to include these other roles um, rather than going through, you know, uh, uh, the uh, CIO, CDO, you know, um, chief experience officer, you know, symposium. Uh, you know, yeah, that, that's kind of my take on it, too, that, you know, you're going to this is a really important function and sometimes it's billions of dollars of budget. Somebody's got to run it. And mm -hmm. the question is, what are you going to call it? But also, is it going to stay separate? Or is it going to be much more integrated? And we're seeing the CIOs being much more integrated, at least the good ones over time. Yeah. I do also want to talk about kind of uh, name inflation, right? That, you know, the director of IT was no longer valued unless they were the CIO, even if they were doing the same thing. 
there was a falsehood for years that if you didn't report to the CEO, you certainly were not counted in organizations. And that's just been proved false over and over again. And now we're seeing a trend that if you don't have the word digital in your title, then you must not be doing anything important. <clears throat> and so also, I, I think we want to come back and think about, you know, are you actually playing the role or are you just playing the right name as we go through this? And I noticed we just had a comment here from uh, Priyanka. Uh, two two good questions. Let, let me see if I can um, address the second one. Um, the way I used to promote uh, continue culture of innovation and continuous improvement, uh, well, two in two in two venues. One was uh, in in my professional life was to um, celebrate um, measured risk, and and certainly a failure was not something that was punished. That's one thing, right? Unless it was through willful incompetence. You know? But I mean, putting that aside, excellent, right? And the way I did it when I was involved with the CIO Symposium uh, was to, to really, if people came up with an idea, was to empower them to kind of run with it. Uh, and in some ways, I, I do remember when I was running the CIO Symposium that it, in some ways it felt like a dog walker with crazy dogs and some good, you know, not crazy dogs, but you had to kind of manage it all going in one direction. Let some people with more leash, some people with less leash, but you learned over time, you know, that the ones, sometimes you could just let them off the leash. That's the best kind, right? That they can go off and, and do something amazing. Um, and I think that to me is, goes to the second question, which was fostering a culture of innovation, um, which, which I'm, I'm really happy to see you know, with Lindsay and um, Alan, you know, with the, the the community in particular, that change, I think, was is you know calculated but risky on Alan's part, and I'm, you know, we're starting to see it pay off in terms of, as Alan put it, you know, like <laughs> May May is the wedding, you know, that we've all been you know talking about beforehand. So so I challenge Lindsay to kind of really take that mantle in May. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that's an inside joke. I'm actually going to miss the symposium this year because I'm getting married. <laughs> and congratulations to that. Hey, I just want to come back to Craig's question. And he asks, um, where are you seeing the CIOs expand their reach beyond strict IT duties? Um, and I, I think we can have a number of the people who are CIO Leadership Award judges answer this question. But um, you know, for me, I guess the key thing is that the CIO is becoming more of a business person leading the vision of the digital products. Um, and so I, I would pass it off by asking, you know, would you call Steve Jobs a CIO? I'm just wondering. Anyway. So do we have any other questions? We've got a, just about four minutes left. Anybody else have anything they, they want to ask? Because you know, if you don't ask, we're going to say whatever we want to say. <laughs> I mean, uh, while, while people contemplate that, just coming back to that question of where are we seeing CIOs break out of just direct IT? You know, I think they're really, in, in some ways, it really depends on the industry, right? Um, and how advanced that particular organization is with not embracing technology as part of their core business. So there are some businesses which, you know, as Alan mentioned, have legacy systems or make it harder and harder to, to, to be nimble um, and for that IT person to kind of move out of the, you know, down in the engine room type of approach to things. So, um, you know, it's interesting you said that, Christopher, because we are we're certainly seeing a lot more with CIOs, you know, really taking a customer experience view or really taking a, you know, just optimizing operations and the entire back end and supply chain in there. And, it, you know, it could be in many ways industry related. Uh, I think there's also something about the size of your company. You know, do you have enough resource to really invest in the future, uh, or or are you doing? You know, are you just trying to keep today going strongly? You know, there was a very good question in the chat from Priyanka Natal. How can CIOs balance the need for innovation and agility with the need for stability and security in their organization? Let me. Again, this is part of why it's such a difficult job because we all want innovation, but remember if the plane crashes, we cannot go back and say, you know, it was a really beautiful plane and the jet engines were 
ChatGPT helped us design them and, and they were great, but the plane cannot crash. You had backups, right, Irving? <laughs> something, you need something. And so the quote unquote poor CIO not only has to be very innovative, agile, take advantage of the technologies, but the plane has to fly. And then as Alan has been doing, you know, uh, cybersecurity is more important than ever. So there'll be all these bad people trying to make the plane crash and the CIA, you know, that's why it's such a tough job. And that's why any question, do we need such people around? The answer is, well, as long as we don't want planes to crash, we need such people around. You know, it reminds me, Irving, of something that we call the, the paradox of IT standardization, uh, which is the more you clean up and standardize the backbone, the more you're able to innovate everything else. And, you know, we think about standardization as restricting innovation, but actually, you know, you, you get the information straight, you get the processes straight, you can then build on those APIs and you can use your agile to do all kinds of things beyond there. So that, that's another opportunity there that, you know, agile helps, but agile helps better if you've got clean things to build upon. So I, there's one more question. I think it's a great chance to turn it over to Alan for as we start to close. And the question is from Harold, will there be any aspects of the symposium that are online this year or is everything in person? To Alan. Yeah, well, uh, so as I mentioned before, the CIO to CIO series, which is starting on April 18th, uh, will be open to ticket holders of the symposium that will be virtual content. Uh, and uh, then um, also um, we have uh, live streaming capability um, currently restricted to sponsors and partners, um, but we may open those tickets up to the public sometime in April. So keep your ears to the ground on that one. Um, so George, we have a, a few things uh, just to remind the audience of. Should I just do it while I'm talking? Go for it. So as I mentioned, the CIO to CIO series is April 18th. The first one is moderated by Shaman Muhammad, uh, the shifting role of the CIO. The second one is on April 25th. That's the digital enterprise hyper reality. Um, this one's actually kind of an interesting session because the idea uh, for it came from Scott Simon, who's going to be on the panel. Uh, he is a CIO who participated in the ideation session back in the fall and suggested this as a panel. So just to point out that we do watch the surveys very closely for ideas. And then on May 2nd will be the last of the CIO to CIO series, The Digital Pace of Collaboration and New Ways of Working, moderated by Wafa Mamili, who was the 2022 uh, award winner. And um, I'll just remind everybody that the symposium itself is on May 15 and 16. Uh, and George, that's all I have. So uh, we are now at the end of our hour. And as always, it seems like there's so much more we could talk about. Uh, so I want to thank you all for being here for this conversation about the CIO, the changes in the CIO role, but changes in the CIO symposium as it goes forward. This conversation, hopefully you'll continue it in, as you leave, but also it'll pick up again on the 18th with the CIO to CIO seri series with Alan. And so I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, thank you everyone. All. Thank you. Bye. All. Thank you.